Namaste. Welcome to Your Spiritual Revolution's very first live interview session. I'm your host and editor of Your Spiritual Revolution magazine, Ravisha Parikh. Uh, today we have with us an intercultural enthusiast, an organizational transformation consultant, and an international speaker, Mr. Mith Mithun Brida. Uh, Mithun cares deeply about the body, spirit, and mind connection in his work, and he brings information, inspiration, and insights to his audiences gathered from years of his personal experience. So let me welcome Mr. Mithun Brida to the conversation. Welcome to YSR's first live talk, sir. Thanks for having me here. Uh, very excited to, to share uh, this uh, platform, this, uh, this time with you and uh, just discuss and share some ideas. Yes, all of us at your spiritual revolution are also very much excited and we are looking forward to today's talk. So our topic of conversation today is self-awareness, values, and consciousness. So let me first ask you, how has self-awareness helped you in your personal journey? I think um, self-awareness uh, is very closely related to uh, self-leadership. So in every moment of your life, you have to lead yourself. You cannot go just uh, alone. You have to go against the forces. You can see like just a simple idea of just walking. That's one of the simplest actions we think that we do. But if you really analyze every moment, it's very complex. Whenever you put one step forward, your whole body is actually in this is disbalanced. You put yourself completely out of balance. Then the other foot gets forward it puts you back in balance and and that uh, motion actually makes you move forward and just just the simple uh, action of walking can be so much complicated if you if you analyze every little moment so yes. so to lead you have to put yourself out of balance and then you find your balance and then you move ahead and uh, so self leadership is not possible without self-awareness uh, you 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 need uh, you need uh, you need this awareness of who you are what, what what you stand for what do you mean and actually you have to go deeper within yourself to know know uh, your values your uh, your deepest um, um, your deepest thoughts and actually what what is important to you at the moment so uh, for for me it's uh, it's uh, it's a way uh, to to lead myself right so how do you uh, how do you think a person can you know start the journey of self awareness when one is a beginner and one doesn't know anything how do you how do you start the journey i think it's uh, the, the journey um, begins uh, with um, um, it, it, it begins with uh, looking inward so for for, okay. for me it was an external journey before so I was always looking outside I was trying to observe the world I was trying to learn I was trying to travel I was I have traveled in like 60 countries so I've really wow. been to many places learning about the cultures meeting people discussing with people going um, uh, reading so much and and actually all that came out is that at some point of time you have to make sense of all those dots you have to connect the dots yourself and and that's the moment when you 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 will realize that there is a knowing doing gap people know a lot but they don't always do it and and this is something I I felt like I have a lot I know a lot of things but why am I not doing it and sometimes you 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 have a a moment you, you thinks because our life is a continuous improvisation you never know what's going to come in the next moment even if you plan like they say life happens when you are planning other things so uh, um, so you you are improvising but you you have to know what's uh, what's exactly uh, you need and and for me that self awareness is uh, was that point of, uh, uh, of getting to know, connect everything. So uh, that I had this move really uh, over time from this external 
mode to the internal mode. So looking within yourself, uh, in uh, spending more time with you yourself. Like uh, when I was uh, in my twenties, I was living in the house of a very famous uh, uh, artist. She's a painter and engraver. She's Indian. She's based in Paris. And I was living uh, uh, in uh, uh, with uh, in her house. I was almost uh, part of the family, and my my time was so much organized. Like everything was planned. Like I would I would wake up early, uh, go for walks or uh, exercise, uh, go to work, come back. I had like coffee, uh, drink, uh, have a, a snack with someone or just uh, have a have a uh, little dinner with friends but it was like even weekends everything was planned and one after the other things were followed and she, mm. and she this artist she would ask me Mithun, uh when do you stay with yourself right. when do you have time for yourself and i would i would say yeah, i take time with myself look i'm always with myself and no you are not with yourself and uh, so it took me more than 15 years really to 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 really understand that what she was referring to and uh, and those uh, so i was more into the action uh, and mm. thinking that you are in the action you are discovering you are doing more things you are achieving more but doing more doesn't mean achieve achieving more and but doing the things that matter uh, could lead you to achieving more and 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 for for that you need this time this introspection this time to understand this time to uh, really let things settle down and then see the clear picture you know if you if you take a uh, bottle of uh, filthy water if you keep it for some time you'll see everything settles down the dirt settles down and so you have to let things settle down to make sense of what is there so clarity so for for me that was the starting point i i i uh, and then uh, there were other things like for me it was a uh, this uh, journey was also about adding meaning to everything i do so how could i add meaning to every moment every activity everything that i do so so for for me that was also about self awareness so it's about asking the question okay if i'm doing this if i'm spending my time on this is it really worth so uh, so observing being aware of everything that is going around you but not only what is around you but also inside you uh, asking these questions again and again and uh, and then uh, taking time to reflect introspection discussing with others who know you well and uh, also discussing with teachers discussing with mentors uh, getting feedback and incorporating the feedback. All that is part of the self-awareness journey. OK, great. That makes a lot of sense. So in today's times, where we have so many distractions right in front of us, what helps you stay focused on your journey to self-awareness? For Yeah, actually, uh, I always say that this is um, um, in, in this world of uh, distraction actually a more digital distraction we are all the time getting i don't know how many mails every day but then you you uh, mails you're getting all those prompts you're getting whatsapp messages social media so everything but i think focus is in <laughs> you have to focus on the right things so how do you focus for for me, uh, it's very easy. I I know one of my values is is the connection with nature, so Mother Nature. So that's first thing. I I spend time with nature every day. So that's mm -hmm. one thing. So disconnected time. So so remove all digital tools. Spend that time, even if it's thirty minutes. But you spend that thirty minutes with nature. So I go for long walks. So it could be like thirty minutes. If I more if I have more time, it goes up to two hours, three hours along the river um, and I go to forests and I go to mountains. So that's a part of really connecting with nature. Then animals. I think uh, I think if you want to really find unconditional love, animals can be really the example. And, um, and I feel it when you are one with nature, when you know that you have the good 
vibrations, good uh, feelings toward the animals, they understand you. For example, I was uh, in the in a village in Normandy, in north of France, last Sunday, and there was a farmhouse. So the farmhouse was locked, and actually okay. we just parked the car in the middle of nowhere in that on our way to the destination because I saw these animals, the cows and the horses. And there was this horse, it was actually in another, completely another part of the farm, very far. The horse saw me, came running, and like out of the, the next minute, I had the horse sniffing my hand. And then he, <laughs> and then he ran away back. But that one moment, I think that was a connection. The horse wanted that attention, wanted to meet, wanted to greet. Um, again, uh, two days back, I was around a lake and there was this hedgehog. The hedgehog was so a wild hedgehog. Okay, so you just in the evening, I saw it something kind of a ball moving on the grass. And I knew immediately it's a hedgehog. It's not a rat. It's not something else. It's a hedgehog. And I just waited. And then slowly the hedgehog came. It was like came with the little steps and it was really cute. But I think it's the fact that I'm, I, I know I would not harm them they are they feel that i would not harm them so the, this yeah. this feeling is connected so i think i think i think animals are are uh, can can help you to 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 connect uh, to focus uh, on self awareness then my mentors so i have many mentors like ira sardenstein um uh, he's uh, based in australia um uh, like uh, skip archimedes in 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 the uk um and um, uh, I have many more mentors. So I have all my mentors, they help me uh, also to focus on my self-awareness, also on self-discipline and friends, colleagues and family. So of course they, they are part uh, of my core team, I can say, who helped me in my personal life to be, to, to, to be aware, uh, to, 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 to have this level of self-awareness. Okay. So you said that one of your values is to connect with nature. And I also believe that our values play a major role in how we live our lives. So can you tell us what role values play for you in your life? Yeah, excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it is, uh, I, I think it's um, uh, values. They are a basis for relationships. So it's uh, it's really the basis and uh, I, and when it comes to relationships, I can call relationships are of two types, internal and external relationships. So because we are a part of a system, we are a part of an ecosystem, so we are never alone. So that's why the internal relationship is important. It's the relationship that we have with ourselves. So what kind of relationship am I having with myself? And this is a question I ask, am I being good to myself? Am I being bad? Am I pushing myself in the right direction? Um, am I um, putting the right feelings in? Uh, uh, am I choosing the right feelings? Am I choosing the right reaction? And, and, and there's a lot happens like in the world, which is, which are stimuli. You get all these stimuli from the external world, but then you have to respond. And, and, and there's a fraction of a second between this stimulus and response. And that's the part of, the freedom that you have, the freedom all lies between to find this, this uh, response. And if you have a well thought and uh, uh, a response which is uh, aligned to your values, then you will be more happy. So for me, that's a part of the internal relationships. What kind of internal relationships are am I having with myself? That mm -hmm. is a, a, a um, played by the, uh, this role is played by values and the external relationships are about everyone exterior to, it could be things because you are very attached to some things, some objects mm -hmm. could be human beings. So your parents, your family, your wife, husband or children, um, it could be your teachers, it could be uh, your students, it could be your colleagues. So everyone outside of you, what kind of relationships you are having. And I think your values, they are this basis for all these relationships. And also uh, values for me uh, play a huge 
uh, role, in, very important role in defining your priorities. So what kind of priorities uh, do you have? What are uh, what is important? What is not important? What is meaningful? What is not in meaningful? And that is your your values alone will will, will tell tell you that. So what matters at a specific moment of your life? So your values might change like um, uh, Dr. John D. Martini. He says, like, your values change over time. What was important when you were young uh, uh, and what what is important when uh, um, now, uh, so when you're growing old or growing up, uh, it, it, it all uh, it all can can be traced to, to values. So 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 that's why um, I think uh, it's it's very important because you if you don't know what your values are, uh, you are kind of uh, blind. You're blind to all everything that you are doing. So I think I think I think you have to first fill up this void. And, uh, and and have this basis, this strong base to 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 create all your relationships. Right. So now that we know that uh, how important it is to know our values, how do you say we live by? I mean, how do you live by your values? You know, how do you yeah. incorporate again? Yeah. Uh, actually, um, it's. Um, um, there, I, I think I told you about this knowing doing gap. So people, uh, so whenever people are asked to do something, it's a part of a change. It's always something new that, and it's a bit like I can take like this elastic, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. And this elastic that you see. So whenever you are asked to do something, you have to flex. You have to go. You have to flex. But what happens is at some point of time, it will flap, okay? It flaps back comes back to that original position so um, so uh, if you are uh, always doing that it's actually you are not actually undergoing the change but what is very important is that you are you have to keep doing it until this thing flaps completely and there is a in um, uh, there is an irreversible change and that is what you are aiming for so for me it's uh, um, uh, you if you really want to uh, Go along. I mean, go against this force that is bringing you back. You you have to uh, you have to be aware of yourself. So self awareness helps. Then you have to know that there is something called a knowing doing gap. It means like we know a lot of things, but we don't do it exactly. And right. and and that you have to realize what how much of it is playing actually to for for you at every moment. So um, what are you uh, knowing and not doing and why did you not do and you have to be very aware of that uh, mm -hmm. because no uh, knowledge um, is is not power knowledge is potential power knowledge is power only when it is put to use so you have to put to use everything that you know every, every all, all the all all the knowledge that you have gathered over time so for for me something else that helps is also simplicity sometimes it's you have to be simple and uh, like there are many many methods and many models in the world and actually uh, people think that the moment they use the model they will get the result that's not true models are never accurate models are like maps they are um, they 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 are never accurate but they could give you an idea of where to go and and, and that's all exactly so you you need to know where to go you need to have an idea of it it makes it simple to understand so once mm -hmm. you are simple that helps you to live by your values uh you have and then i think you need courage and boldness so that means you have to be courageous and if, even if it's a little step, little moment of courage that you showed, I think you have to you have to give a pat on your back because those little moments of courage, they help you also to live by your values. So once you know, you have to tell others, you have to communicate about your values, actually. You have to tell the world and uh, then you have to live by it with courage and something else that helps is uh, not being a people pleaser if you're trying to please everyone i think you'll you'll have a hard time playing uh, living your values so uh, it has happened in my personal life i have been asked to do things which were not part of my values 
And so I had mm. to find a way not to do it. I had to find a way to say no. And I knew that that would not be very um, much acceptable for a few people. Mm. And they might not be happy about it. They would not, might not be happy about my decisions. And that's the way it is because you have to stick to your values. So, uh, so, so for me, you, if you take it, uh, and then uh, also um, for for me, uh, as I told you, nature is very important. Spending the time in nature, so so that that is uh, that also indicates being connected to my values. So, so the more you feel connected to your values, the more mm -hmm. you do what is important to you and what is aligned to your values the more uh, energy you will feel in your life, the more uh, joy you will have in your life. And that will uh, let you live more of that life. Okay. So a third topic of conversation was consciousness. So what does consciousness mean to you? And why is it important now, like in today's time? Yeah, it's... Uh, such a broad question and i think it's, it's very difficult to to explain in a few words but i can tell you what it means to me personally it yes. means depth. for me it means depth how deep can you go and uh, really depth uh, uh, going deep within your thoughts within yourself so it's going inward it's an inward journey so for me that's a uh, part it also means accessing higher frequencies so if you are accessing those higher frequencies, we are in a world of unlimited uh, potential and uh, we can access those higher frequencies and they, then we can connect with others at a different level. So for me, that uh, is part of the consciousness. For me, energy is also consciousness. So um, what kind of energy are you in? What level of energy are you in and how do you keep that level of energy so it's also deeply connected to your consciousness and then the other connections the connections that you have with with everything around you that is part of the consciousness so think about it everything is a system okay so uh, and then we are living actually in a world of system of systems and think about that it's a very complex world there are many systems each system mm -hmm. is interacting with another system. So, for example, the animal ecosystem, that is one system you can say. There are several ecosystems actually in different parts of the world, but they are all connected. If you can see like how this pandemic happened, uh, it shows how much interconnected we are. And uh, so it's a really definitely a system of systems. And uh, what kind of connections are you having? So that also is part of your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, um, and um, you asked about why it is important now. I think we are living in a very, very uh, challenging period now with everything that is going on. Okay, we are, we are digitally connected, but disconnected. So right. uh, relationships are getting more and more superficial or I, I can use the word fake looks fake seems fake because we don't go beyond a certain uh, limit of sharing um, people are more uh, closing on, on uh, when, when it, whenever it comes to 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 give more in a relationship so it's uh, it's 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 challenging there are lots of challenging geopolitical conditions now environmental uh, conditions which are not improving which are really getting mm. from bad to worse and uh, we also have financial uh, uh, challenges in the in the global markets so so many things uh, so many geopolitical environmental financial uh, and personal challenges we can see in the world so i think mm. all that makes consciousness something again very important to consider uh, what is uh, important to us as human beings as um, what can we do together and what is a part of uh, we, we have to also understand that we, we are a part of the whole uh, whole system whole consciousness so I think I think uh, I think that's I would say this is what makes it important topic to consider now since we are also in uh, lockdown in several parts of the world 
all these restrictions. So I think it's a it's also a great time to to think about to to take this time to reflect. Right. So what has helped you expand your consciousness? Um, yeah. For so for for me, uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, a lot of things but for me the first part is i would say willingness to go at, uh, um, um, beyond my comfort zone mm -hmm. so this is something mm -hmm. which i always did from a very early age in my life i would choose always the most difficult path um, i had no idea if i would succeed but i would choose it i would go for it and and that's something which stuck to me and I, I i keep it i always do something beyond my comfort zone uh, and it could be like something uh, emotionally uncomfortable it, it that could be having a discussion just simple discussion with someone we don't want to discuss or sharing something with a relative or someone from the family which could have consequences so uh, even that could be could be a could be a going beyond your con comfort zone uh, it could be physical for example every year i do something which is uh, which is beyond my physical comfort zone, so that's why I mean I, I keep climbing mountain peaks like three thousand, four thousand meters above sea level. So so which is which really takes a long time to prepare, and mm -hmm. um, I I I do other things like I have tried um, paragliding, uh, I have tried skydiving, so jumping with my former colleagues in Belgium. Uh, from a plane and and uh, and also doing a practicing a choreography and doing it just sticking to that choreography during the skydiving or mm -hmm. uh, even bungee jumping so uh, two years back I did bungee jumping from 70 meters uh, in a from a viaduct uh, an old uh, an old bridge in Soulevre, Normandy in France so so that was also like those are the moments when the brain actually stops freezes and so mm -hmm. your mind freezes and that's act actually what you need you need those moments when your brain uh, actually um, uh, your uh, conscious brain it stops functioning it gets hijacked and that's those are the moments when you can uh, access some deep uh, uh, your consciousness or your deep levels of uh, uh, other feelings which you are not accessing. So if you go beyond, so if you take any activity like that, that makes you go beyond your comfort zone, you can access those moments. And over time, when you have more and more of those moments, you'll see like you are really able to access, uh, you're really uh, able to expand. So, so for me, um, uh, if I say you have to know about your values, you have to know about your ambitions, you have to know about your opinions, about your feelings. So let's, let's say uh, these orange dots are the, the values, these mm -hmm. pink lines, they are your ambitions, these green uh, strips, they are your feelings, uh, these uh, yellow strips, they are your opinions. So you have to know that they are all, they should be connected. And so, so this is important. And when you are, your uh, consciousness is expanding, you have to make sure that everything is connected to each other. All of them are connected. And for me, that is about expanding so you you have to expand and you have you also need a rhythm so you need a you need a uh, it has to be coherent okay you, you, you cannot uh, you cannot focus on one of the one of the uh, one of the things i talked about and not on the other so you have to you have to build right. that expansion right so you said that uh, there's a gap between knowing and doing so in your opinion, what keeps people from, you know, undertaking the personal transformation initiatives? Yeah, e excellent uh, question. I, I think, uh, uh, I think uh, what is very tough for people is making tough choices in a chaotic world. Uh, so they have to make choices. The moment you, when you haven't made the choice, 
when you haven't told others that you have made a choice, it's quite safe because no people don't know about it. But then uh, it's it involves a risk. So there is a reputational risk. There could be risk of uh, what people think about us. You might get more self-conscious about this fact. So you have to remain cognizant about what uh, what you have told about what choices you have taken or what choices you have made really in a, in a bold manner. And, and making those tough choices involves a risk. Every mm -hmm. risk has potential um, uh, potential effects you have to deal with after effects of your decision making. And that's why people want to play safe. And that's what makes mm -hmm. them stay in the comfort zone, do what they have been doing, uh, keep uh, every don't take uh, any risks. So they mm -hmm. want to take the minimum risks. But uh, but this has been shown that if every progress that has been made in the history of mankind, it was always about taking making that risk, um, okay. uh, taking that risk, and uh, it was always about uh, going beyond this comfort zone, taking mm -hmm. taking those bold decisions, telling people that you are doing it. And once you have made the decision, for me, there is something else which is also difficult for people is integrity and agility. So people have trouble being uh, in, in keeping their integrity at all times. And, mm -hmm. and, and this uh, also something which uh, doesn't help to really bring about a personal transformation. So I, I think, uh, again, I, I was telling you about the elastic, right? So mm -hmm. you have to you have to, to, to re see a real transformation. Even if you do and the elastic comes back to the original shape, you have to keep doing it, keep doing it so that your muscle, you're building that muscle for transformation. Mm -hmm. And at, there will be a point when you will have en enough power, energy uh, in, 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 in your arms that you'll be able to go beyond this elastic. So I think it's, it's about doing it again and again and staying um, being um, and uh, having high level of integrity about who you are, who you mean, what you stand for, and agility is also important. Um, it means that we 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 have to be uh, um, we have to have certain am amount of agility in everything that we do. So it's mm -hmm. an ever changing world. Everything, all the we don't know what is going to change in the next moment we don't know what where 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 the uh, where uh, there will be opportunity tomorrow but if you if you want to keep things open um, uh, so one of the very ancient philosophers said that uh, be uh, uh, be open to everything but uh, attached to nothing and I think I think that's a great idea to to think about because that might help you to be also have a certain amount of agility. So it mm -hmm. keeps you open and openness in your choices. Uh, you are open to, to move to a different direction and, mm -hmm. and you are seeing what, ha what can bring about value. So really you are making choices, you are doing things which will bring positive value at all times for people you care about. And uh, if you are focused on that, and you are ready to change the way you think, the way you have done. And if you can, uh, if you can stop uh, thinking about this phrase, this is the the way we have always done. If you can stop saying this phrase, and really be open to uh, what can I do to help, and what can I do to change, and what can I uh, do now to make mm -hmm. it work. Uh, being open to all these new choices, and also thinking beyond your choices. A lot of times, you know, it's a uh, when you give, uh, like, for example, the, 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 they think like life is a bit like the multiple choice questions, okay? You have, have those four choices, but actually in, in life, it's, it's not a multiple choice uh, question. You, you, you see those four options, but actually there might be something which, is, which you haven't considered in your options. And often finding that option, which is not in your list of options, will, great, will give you the biggest opportunity. To have a personal transformation. Great. So you told us that you have traveled to more than 60 countries, right? And I know that you have lived in four countries for long periods. And I also read on your LinkedIn profile that you are proficient in nine languages. 
So how has working with, you know, so many different cultures and knowing so many different cultures helped you in increasing your self-awareness? Yeah, thank you. It's an excellent question. And yeah, I, I was curious. I think I think uh, curiosity, one of my uh, speaker friends in um, in Netherlands, um, um, uh, Peter Zinn, he, he, he said in one of his speeches, like, curiosity killed the cat. But you are not a cat and i think i think that's a good reminder you have to be curious i think uh, meeting other cultures it's all about curiosity um mm -hmm. i like one one expression in in flemish from belgium uh, which says that ik ben een curieuze neuze mustardpot it means i'm so curious that i have my nose in a in a pot of mustard I'm that curious to know about things, and I think if you if you can have that kind of curiosity, I um, I, um, I one of my favorite authors, uh, Jim mm -hmm. Collins, he says uh, uh, if uh, if curiosity could be an addiction, that would be one of uh, that would be one of the addictions I would like to have in my life. So for me, it's 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 an extension of this curiosity, which changes your perception. Culture mm -hmm. is all about about patterns and what your brain and mind is doing, your subconscious mind is doing also recognizing the patterns and responding to those patterns. So it's a, it's a, it's a mechanism of observing the patterns, recognizing the patterns and responding to that set of patterns. And that's why culture is always like deep. It's a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a, a very less small part mm -hmm. of it is visible but most of it is unsaid, invisible, but you are expected. So there are so many protocols. There are so many things you're expected to do in a certain culture. You're expected to behave in a certain way. So I think, I think all of that, it's, uh, it, it makes you, it make, makes it difficult and riskier to interact mm -hmm. and to, to build relationships with people who are very different from you. But I think uh, if you if you are going through that pattern recognition, if you are observing what is happening, but then at the same time, if you are taking this time to really uh, go deep inside, if you know yourself very well, if you mm -hmm. if you know what your values are, uh, if you are self aware, I think that is a basis. So if you have to know yourself, then you can know others. And then you can bridge the gap. So if you if you want to bridge the gap, you you have to go. You have to start with yourself. So for me, uh, it's uh, about this uh, working and consciously observing the deep patterns. It's also about perception. So when you are seeing that perceptions, things that are true in one country, they are not true in another country, and and how people perceive the same things in a very different manner. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, there are countries where where money is it's good to have money. It's good to tell people that you have you are successful. And there are countries mm -hmm. where money is absolutely a taboo. You're not expected to talk about it. That's the last topic they would talk about in public. So you have to know like what what uh, what, what what those topics are. So for me, uh, over time, it's it takes a lot of time to be courageous also to to do mistakes understand get feedback adapt know and uh, and when you are uh, going when you're having those experiences in many countries when you're meeting those people from different cultures and for those who don't have this opportunity to travel to all these countries i would say mm -hmm. you have a big opportunity even in the place where you stay even in from one house to another house you don't have the same culture so even if you're in the same city if even if you're meeting people from a uh speaking the same language even they don't share the same culture so i think i think these differences of cultural differences you can find everywhere if you are okay. focused if you are curious if you are trying to learn if you're trying to see and if you're trying to observe at a deeper level i think that that will change your perception and once your perception is changed actually you are changed you are seeing the world in a different way so it's a it's a two faceted uh, way like uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the the what you are seeing becomes different what you are seeing actually changes uh, yourself so then that in turn changes the way you look at other things and you will again focus on some 
different things after that. So it's a cycle that continues, continuous cycle of change. And mm -hmm. uh, it helps you finally to be more aware of who you are. Uh, I think uh, I think I can I can say this uh, to everyone, every person who lives who has lived outside his own city or his own country, they 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 have taken this time more time to be more aware of what that city or the country stands for. And actually, mm -hmm. you have a deeper connection with the city after you have left that city. And 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 that that uh, itself is uh, not possible if you are mm -hmm. all the time there. And I think it's it's just because we 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 get into patterns. So if you are uh, like fish cannot see water, okay. So you can if you are the fish in that water, you will never feel that there is something. Uh, only you understand. You feel it when you take the the fish will feel it when you take the fish out of water. So um, so you have to understand like uh, if you are in the system, like if you somebody said like you cannot see yourself in the photo if you are in the frame. So you have to go out of the frame to really observe what it is, and mm -hmm. and 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 that might give you a deeper understanding of of who you are. So I think cultures are a great, uh, fascinating topic. You have so much mm -hmm. to learn, and you you can know so much about yourself, about how you react, how you perceive, how what is important to you, what is important to the peop culture of the people you are interacting with. Uh, what is not important for them? How uh, can you bridge this, the gaps? How can you build connections? How can you build relationships that can have ex, uh, have a, have a, a deep impact on your life? I think it's all about that. So living all those cultural differences, going beyond differences, going beyond stereotypes, and connecting at a deeper level with people uh, which is what we wish to. And if you want to go for that, I think you need a deeper level of self-awareness. So the more people you meet who are different from you, you the mm -hmm. more you will understand what, what these differences are. And actually, if there is really a difference or not, or can you do something about the difference? So this is a lot of things to, to look at. And it's a it's an iterative process. It's an organic process. You cannot build it in one day. You have a little experiences. You 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 pile up those experiences one one over the other, and you focus on the most important aspects uh, that most important values that uh, your hierarchy of values uh, which are important. So um, uh, that will will give you that will make you more self aware. Great. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. If you have to give just one advice to our viewers, anything that you would like uh, from all the topic that we discussed. Yeah, um, I think if I, have, if I have one takeaway message that I would like to give to, to all the viewers, it will be that you, you have to know your values. So know your values, take, take really the time to know your values. Um, and uh, go deeper. And uh, it's not the time to look outside. Take the time to look inside. And uh, if if you can take that time, uh, you might find a, a whole new world of opportunities. Right. I'm sure all of the, all of the people watching, including me, have learned a lot from today's session. And with this, I would like to conclude the session. And once again, thank you so much, sir, for being with us. And thank you to all the viewers for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a wonderful uh, moment of sharing. And thanks for inviting me here. Thank you That's so much. Sir. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye.